No, 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 that's a wire. Super obviously raw right now, and it's still painful, and I'm still just sad about everything that went down. But yeah, I cannot think of any other time in my life when I've had that sense of community surrounding me. Having made that decision firmly in my mind and, and making that jump away from the sport of triathlon, which was scary at the time, and now it's, yeah, it's been an incredible last six months for me. What a show, and what an athlete she is. Great job to you, Heather Jackson. No, who are you? No. What do you do? <laughs> I am Heather Jackson and I am a gravel cyclist and ultra trail runner. Hey, <laughs> Jackson! Yes. You just, you decided that you're the most interesting person in endurance sports right now. Yes. Oh my god, you're too kind. <laughs> unbelievable, unbelievable. Your first 50K, you take home a victory. Tell us about it. <laughs> well, my name is Sean Watkins. Um, people know me as Waddy, um, and I'm Heather Jackson's husband. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Not awesome. Right. There you go. You, you know you're riding extremely fast. <laughs> <laughs> describe Wadi as the most sensitive, caring, <laughs> uh, selfless. I laugh because he's very sensitive. He cries at TV commercials, which he will admit to. But he is seriously, yeah, he's the most caring, selfless, um, giving person I've ever met in my life. 30 minutes before the start. As someone who maybe isn't the most, I guess, sensitive or emotional, since being with Wadi, I feel I'm, I'm a little bit more just because I do see like the beauty in things more and I see the, the emotions around things that make different moments or different experiences that much better when you're like really in it. And I think he brings that to so many things that we do and we get to experience together. We're in Emporia, Kansas for the Unbound 200 race um, that we've been waiting for for a year since uh, the last time we were here. I think my hope for her last year was to <clears throat> have an experience that made her be like, yeah, this is, this is okay to 
<clears throat> let triathlon go and you know this is something that i yeah. because for me it's all about <clears throat> her happiness right it really is um oh sorry this is weird this, this like makes me <laughs> No, in actuality, what I <clears throat> what I hope she gets out of this, and I know she will, is is an ex the experience we're looking for from gravel. We came from high performance sport of triathlon, and I think our lives are parallel parallel with you know like an Ian Boswell and a Pete Stetna. We shared a lot of stories with them, and there's a lot of common denominators. So we moved into this space to yeah, step into something that we're, <clears throat> we want to enjoy. We want to get something different from it. I mean, the performance aspect is obviously there, but it's, uh, it's more just like an extension of the journey of our lives, right? I'm gonna take a snap, I hope you don't mind. Yeah, and I'm gonna tell her, I was like, oh yeah, we're gonna go swim together. <laughs> You're amazing, by the way. So how's your transition to, from a triathlete to gravel? Well, I heard you've been pole aiming, so that's like phenomenal. <laughs> okay, it's can, not about I me, can you can go ahead. <laughs> I mean, growing up, my family was, my parents were the ones that have given me these opportunities from day one. They sacrificed so much. My mom was a teacher. My dad was a state trooper. Um, you know, they didn't have much to give, but and yet they gave everything to all four of their kids. And that is literally what got me on this journey. Sports have literally been my whole life. I think from before I could even walk, I was probably competing in some capacity. Before I would say high school, when I really honed in on both soccer and ice hockey, I had played pretty much everything growing up except for swimming. So, <laughs> um, soccer, ice hockey, uh, softball, baseball, gymnastics, horse riding, you name it. I think the earliest aspirations I had were in 1994, I remember it was the first Women's World Cup and they came to the US and my parents took us to one of the women's soccer matches and I met Mia Hamm, Brandi Chastain, some of those early women's national team players. Um, and I, at that time, was um, on one of the early Olympic development program teams for soccer and I remember seeing that World Cup tournament, watching it on, on TV and thinking like, I wanna play in the World Cup. At the same time, there were two women playing in the NHL at the time. Cami Granato was one of them. And I remember thinking, oh my God, there's a, there's a female playing in the NHL. And I'm from New Hampshire originally, so watched a lot of NHL. I was a huge Bruins fan. And I was like, oh, I wanna play in the NHL. Like why, of course, that would be incredible. So those were the earliest memories I have of World Cup and playing in the NHL. 1998, a couple years later, was the first year they had women's ice hockey in the Olympics. And I was in high school and I had actually just been selected for the, I guess the ODP equivalent for ice hockey. They bring you to Lake Placid, New York every summer and train at the Olympic Training Center there. And that just set off this goal of, I want to play in the Olympics. Really good to see you. Are you doing the 315 now? No, no, no. Oh. You've been killing it. <laughs> Sorry. It's awesome. So cool. I love it. Thank you. Hey, hey what's hey. up? How are you, Shay? <laughs> <laughs> Having competed in sports for so long and having sports be the vehicle of how I'm living my life, you know, early on in my career as an athlete, in all the different sports, it was always, you know, winning a game, winning a race, very much different uh, mindset in terms of why I did those sports and, and what I was trying to get out of them compared to now, uh, much later on in my athletic journey of this is life that you live every day. Sports or athletics or these different things are, are just part of it. And it's not, 
what you're doing, it's the people you meet along the way, it's the community you have around you, it's the individuals you share memories with. These are all the things you'll remember. I raced triathlon for almost 15 years, which when I look at that now, I'm like, that is insane. That was my life. That was literally the biggest chunk of my life devoted to one specific thing. I look back on the first, uh, I would say, 10 years of racing triathlon very fondly. I remember those early days, those grassroots days, those showing up to races, you know, the day before and hopping in them and uh, hanging out with everyone after. And um, you see those early improvements and progression as you got better. And those, I would say, first, yeah, eight to 10 years, um, I remember very, very fondly. And it was almost as it got more and more serious is where it's tough to walk that line of trying to be the best, the best I can be, the best in the world, trying to toe that line, but still remembering why you do the sport and, and why you enjoy it and if you still enjoy it or not. Um, and that was where that balance could shift either way on any given day for me. And, and I struggled through that for the last, yeah, two, three years. It's more exciting for me, and I know it's more exciting for Heather. It's it's new and and something that we're excited to do. And so I think in triathlon we're going through the motions towards the end of things, and um, and so for me it's fresh and I'm excited and I don't know. It feels like we've just started. Don't hurt yourself. I can put it in slow mo. Go. I feel like I can't play that game anymore of like, oh, I'm new to this. I'm, you know, I'm just, I've only done a few of these. I think I've been able to put together some good days at some events this spring. And it definitely helps my self-belief in saying, okay, I can line up with these women. It helps me sit, stand there at the start line and be like, okay, you deserve to be here and can ride with these women. Originally, Unbound and Western States in the same year, uh, let alone three weeks apart, was not the original plan. The initial plan was not to do both. And then when I realized I had entries to both, I don't know, it actually got me even more excited to see if I could do this, to see how well I could do it both, to see if it's possible, to see if you could mesh the training, to basically undertake this challenge of to insane events <laughs> and only three weeks apart. She said, hi, it's me. I think I did something to my hamstring. I'm not sure what to do. I made it to Devil's Thumb. I think we're done. Motherfucker! caught my left toe on a rock on a kind of rocky descent and kind of stuck my right foot out to try to stop me from falling and it just literally landed on more rocks and went straight out in front of me. So in the moment, I literally thought I had torn my hamstring off at the attachment point. 
I will remember that walk because I had my whole community around me helping me get out. No, we'll put you in the front seat. Performance for me is, it's the preparation that goes into it. All the little things you did to get yourself there the best you could. To say performance is a result is a, a slippery slope. doesn't necessarily explain what could have gone on out there. There are so many things that people might not see on paper if you were to just define performance as a result. Only you will know that you gave it everything. I think the biggest message I would want to leave on my career, my career as an athlete in, in a variety of sports is that don't be afraid to think outside the box and, and try things that maybe aren't the the direct path that others are doing. There's no one right way. There's no one answer. Yeah, I've fallen in love with gravel cycling and ultra trail running right now, and that's the frontier that I am heading down. There's nothing out there. There's no set map. It's open for you to choose where you want to go. Which direction do you want to head?